so-called Saudi Arabia of the North. The Alberta tar sands, an oil deposit so rich it's transformed Canada into a world energy superpower. But there is a catch. This oil is heavy. It's thick and tarry and all mixed up with sand and clay. Scraping it out of the earth and separating out the valuable stuff is a massive job that goes on 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. It may not be pretty, but this is prosperity, the engine that drives the Canadian economy. It's also what's turning Canada into one of the biggest polluting countries in the developed world. For a long time, most people thought none of this was even possible. Squeezing the heavy oil out of all that sand and clay is a dirty, expensive process, and for decades, most oil companies scoffed at the idea. Today, with the price of a barrel of oil approaching $100, there's a mad dash underway to extract every drop possible. Government is clearing the way, and oil companies are making billions of dollars, but neither seems to be keeping track of the staggering environmental costs of a modern-day black gold rush. Ask Albertans what makes this province great, and not many would likely say money or oil. David Schindler definitely wouldn't. The University of Alberta scientist is world-renowned for understanding how rivers and lakes work. He thinks most Canadians have no idea what's happening north of Fort McMurray. If I were a millionaire, I would fly every Canadian over the oil sands. You know, and if I were an entrepreneur, I would probably, before I did, buy a whole bunch of hybrid dealerships or, or Volkswagen dealerships or something. Because I think most people would be instant converts. They'd get rid of their SUVs and their big pickup trucks and buy something fuel efficient. This is what he's talking about. Mines, machinery, and toxic waste. Almost 40,000 square kilometers of northern Alberta, an area larger than Vancouver Island, is already approved for development. 